What are the first few words that pop into your head when you think of public speaking? Being on your own. Big audience. Yes. What about feelings? What kind of feelings do you feel when you think about public speaking? It's quite exciting. Like, it's your genuine going, but then you can be quite nervous before you go on. Yeah. How many of you guys get nervous when you public speak? Mm. Yes. So most of us. I'm a weirdo where I get like actually like really hyped up right before a speech like if I were to speak to a thousand people right now like I don't know this thing comes over me and I just feel so natural and in my zone public speaking was that one gateway that gave me a flip in my confidence and really helped me elevate my personality and be aligned with the truest version of myself and it actually helped me to be <coughs> Brian Rashid that gentleman back there his personal assistant slash right hand woman <laughs> for our agency that we have now and one thing working with Brian has taught me is that public speaking is this amazing opportunity to share with the world your unique experience on life because every single one of you as I have found out come from a different country and come from a different city and we're raised in a different way and because of that you are a blend of all of these experiences and emotions and perceptions and when you come onto the stage it's an awesome opportunity for you to share a little bit of that with the audience public speaking is one of the best tools that you can have in your repertoire going into the professional world so thank you very much and my whole life has been around telling stories that sell. If you think about, if I think about my life in a, in a sentence, that's basically what I've been able to do consistently really, really well. And so I just find communication fascinating. And tonight I want to spend the time going through some different public spe speaking training. Public speaking is just one part of a brand. And the cool thing that I'm obsessed with is this idea that every single one of us has the opportunity to build a personal brand. It is really the currency of 2017. How you talk about yourself is important, whether you wanna start your own company or whether you wanna get hired by somebody else. And the brand behind how you talk about yourself is super important. I get a lot of people that wanna work for me um, and I don't even ask them for their resumes anymore. I ask them to send me their social media links and that's what I look at. I looked at their LinkedIn, I looked at their Twitter, I looked at their Facebook, I looked at their Instagram, if they have a YouTube channel. Um, and I just think that, that we're moving more and more and more into that. I had a meeting today with a senior executive at, at LinkedIn who said the same thing. LinkedIn's about to roll out some real, some real cool video stuff. Um, and I just think that that's gonna be the future. So tonight I wanna focus equally as much on, on, on public speaking as I do on figuring out how you can all create a brand. So I'm gonna give you a little hack. This is how you stand out. It's really all about who you know. And I know that, that sounds super cliche, but here's what's exciting about that statement. It's never ever been easier, and this is why I'm so bullish on personal brand. It's never ever been easier for you to connect with the decision maker and the people that influence the decision maker as it is right now. So here's what I mean by that. Here's a little LinkedIn hack. Most people wanna apply for a you know, basic consultancy position at McKinsey or, or PwC, right? and you're gonna send your resume and you're gonna send a cover letter and you're gonna have zero percent chance of getting that, right? Zero. Um, I don't care, like, just zero. Just, just not, they're just not looking. They're not even looking at your resumes. But, um, here's a more interesting strategy. Well, let's jam together real quick. If you wanna use LinkedIn, which is an incredibly useful tool, by the way, um, and the more and more I'm learning about it, the more and more I'm realizing this is actually a, re it's a real player for the, in the professional world. How, what, would you, what would your strategy be to get that job? Who would you highlight in LinkedIn to target, to get on their radar before the interview or before the, after the resume has been sent in? Someone in the HR team. Okay. Someone's actually gonna so, great. So you would look at the director of HR. How many other people that are applying for that job do you also think have tried to connect with the director of HR? Communicate with them on different platforms. Twitter is the single best platform to get someone's attention that otherwise is impossible. Even Instagram, Instagram DMing is probably second because most people are actually looking at their DMs even if they're super famous. But Twitter, everyone is looking at their Twitter and like you just tweet them, hey, um, great talk, John. 
it's funny, it's actually crazy, but you're way more likely to get a connection on LinkedIn with the board of advisors and the board of directors than you are with the C-level people. Now what happens when you connect with director of HR? What does director of HR see? You are now connected with, wait, this woman is connected with three of our board members? Except, you've hacked it. There are 10 to 20 to 30 to 50 ways to get to a person. That's how it stand out. Hey, Julie, Julie's the head of HR. Just, you know, saying hi, um, you know, been really enjoying getting to know the board and uh, think this could be a great fit. Then Julie's gonna say, oh shit, she's connected with three of our board members. And Julie's too busy to ask the board about you. But your resume now gets moved to the top because Julie just assumes that you're connected. I think drinking in, 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 um, is just generally a very bad thing to have on your Facebook. Okay. Like, there's just no need for it. No, but it's not like I'm like on the floor. It's like holding a glass. Oh, that's fine. That's, like, fine. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But I think that there's too many of them. Yeah. You know, if it's you having a glass of champagne with, I, I personally think you should delete all alcohol pictures. Okay. Because I just don't, unless, unless it's like, <laughs> unless it's, no, no. <laughs> But I mean, unless it's like you, it, unless, it's, unless the brand play is bigger than the alcohol play. In other words, if I'm with George Clooney cheersing a, a glass of champagne, probably a good idea to keep that up. But if you, it's you and your girls, like ah, brunch, ah, like there's no value in that. Like you don't bring value with that, right? So those are the kinds of photos that I would delete. Are you gonna get hired or not hired because of it? Maybe. I mean, some companies are weirder about it than others. I, but I will answer this for you. It just depends on what you want. Instagram, like, listen, I am a personal brand, right? Like, I, I have my own personal brand, so I am a little bit careful. I do let my personality go, uh, you know, ex be exposed on these things. You gotta be yourself. Yeah. And if, if you, if that thing that is you and your core is the reason someone doesn't hire you, you're not gonna be happy there anyway. Yeah, exactly. okay, good. So do your thing. I mean, I wouldn't be like naked on Instagram. Be, be you. And especially because you don't know. Here's what I would say. I think that you guys all have a great opportunity to create content. And I think that I would try to use my, my social media to start to position myself as a thought leader in something. And that might change a lot. What is something that you really love that you could see as being a potential profession for you? My thing is this. I want you to all think about yourselves as media companies. Meaning I think every single person in this room should have a podcast and every single person in this room should start to write articles on LinkedIn and Medium or every single person in this room should have some sort of daily vlog. We do a daily vlog and it's, you know, it's just me on my phone. The thing, the thing is, is that I just am such a fan of documenting your process. And let me tell you something, my friend, you just have no idea what that could lead to. But here's what I can guarantee you. Not doing it won't lead to anything. You don't know where the opportunities come from, but they just come over and over and over and over, but only if you're consistently doing stuff. Think about how you can become a place that people go every day. Like, don't worry if it's perfect. Like, let the world decide what happens to you. But just do things that you love and put it out there everywhere. Media company, put an article on Medium, Put an article on LinkedIn, turn it into a podcast, put that up on iTunes, put that up on Stitcher, put that up on Google Play, right? Do a fun little video, put it up on Facebook, do a Facebook Live, do an Instagram Live, take some cool pictures, put them on Instagram, 15, 20, 25, 30 hashtags, right? And all of a sudden, the, hey, I didn't know that you were in New York. That's how it starts, right? I didn't know you were in New York. You wanna have a cup of coffee? Content is, is everything, but good content, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the important thing. <clears throat> good content like is such a it's such a subjective thing right you might think you're the best actor in the world everyone in the, if everyone in this room that's gonna hire you thinks that you suck then you're not the best actor in the world. you might think you're the worst actor in the world but everyone loves you so now you're the best at it's so subjective this is why I get so mad at the perfectionists if you guys ever write me and say, Brian, I want to get started, but I'm a perfectionist, I will write you back and say, stop making excuses. You are scared and hiding behind your perfectionism as, a, as an excuse. 
because your perfection is completely made up in your own mind and it's not your job to decide what's good, it's the market's job. The market right now is such a fascinating place. Talent gets rewarded. If you're good, you'll win. It might take you a while. It might take you 10, 15, I've been doing this every day, 80 hours a week for five years and I still feel like I'm climbing and climbing and climbing. Every day is a grind. And if you put in the work every single day for a long time and you're talented, you'll win too. There's enough to go around for everybody. The game is always changing. For me, the game is pretty simple. Do I get to do what I love every day? If the answer is yes, even if that changes a hundred times over the course of the year, I'm winning the game. I make the old, my own game. Like, here's the big problem with everything. And this is the thing that I am most passionate about. Everyone is on defense. You're waiting to fit yourself into this little box so that you can be accepted by some person that's gonna claim you expert. What's way more fun for me, man, and this is how I've lived the last five years of my life, which is why I feel completely free. I lived like that until I was 20, 28. Last five, six years of my life, I feel free because I get to decide what the game is every single day. I don't care what you think. I don't care what the company thinks. I don't care what anybody thinks because I know that if I get to wake up every single day, today I had a very dynamic day. I go home tonight and I won the game. And tomorrow the game might be completely different. But just do the things that make you happy for now and do them the best that you can and put out information everywhere. Listen, the game is changing. When I was a kid, my parents used to not let me play video games because the game was social interaction. The game was athletics. The game was getting a scholarship. The game was being outside and being popular. Do you know how much money kids are making now playing esports? Millions. So the parent that wanted their kid to play the game, that society was telling them, <clears throat> the game's gonna change, man. 10 years from now, the thing that you spend the next 10 years doing that you don't really wanna do because you wanna become an expert in that thing is not gonna be the thing anymore. Wrap your head around that and you'll win. If you are trying to do something to please somebody, including the game or the market right now, you'll lose, I can promise you. Because by the time you get really good at it, the algorithm changes and you gotta go back to step one. The only thing you can do, the only thing you can do is invest in your strengths right now in the ways that make the most sense right now and go all in on that. America is obsessed with selling you on the idea that you need to focus on your weaknesses. It's why self-help is such a big thing here and it's why I actually have like very little respect for like the self-help world because they actually make money on your weaknesses and the more they can perpetuate your weaknesses, the more money they make. So if I'm constantly pointing out to you what is your weakness and how can you work on it, I'm making money because you're never gonna be able to figure that thing out. What I look for is a couple of things. Are you a positive person? And are you willing to work your face off? And have you done something related to what you say you really care about? Nick sent me videos that he did because he wanted to do video. It would be much harder for me to give Nick a chance if he had no videos to show me. It would be much harder for me to take Santa seriously as an aspiring speaker if she had no videos of her giving speeches. If you want to be a journalist and you have no articles written, it's going to be real hard for me to take you for ser seriously. So the first thing you got to do is create content around what you think that you want to do. Second thing is you got to be a person I enjoy. I'm going to spend 70 hours a week with you. Um, and the third thing is you got to show me that you're willing to work hard and hustle and get along well with the other people. It's been a real pleasure hanging out with you guys tonight. So thanks for your time and energy. Appreciate it. A lot. Applause for Brian.